uh, wishing each other in, in greetings. Yesterday was the first day of the Chinese New Year, and so people are still happy greeting each other. Today is second day. <coughs> So it's absolutely fine to still be greeting each other. And um, the Chinese New Year is 15 days. So you, you watch it go peak, you see. Peak, first day, and then it drops. Because partly you have the... Well, in the past, in, over in China, for example, they really take it very, very seriously. Not so much in Southeast Asia. Definitely not here. But they take 15 days. So that's a lot of eating, celebrating going on. And then the last part of it, they, they go vegetarian. Not because they are vegetarian, but because they've just eaten too much meat. So it happens uh, over in Southeast Asia, it's uh, three days. So those go from Singapore, you, they get three days. And we have some friends from Singapore here with us. Bobby's here. Uh, Laurie is here with us as well. And that's nice to you know, have friends come over like that. And for us here, we're just grateful Chinese New Year landed on a weekend. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a normal day. Kids got to go to school. You know, everybody's still got to go to work. And, you know, and to us, it's just, we're just happy that we can have it. Now, Chinese New Year, the celebration of, of course, there's the cultural part. And that's wonderful that we can celebrate the cultural part. You know, it, it, it's always, you know, we, this is who we are. And then there's the traditions that are there, and the traditions can be wonderful too, right? And the children, the happiest is they see the red packet. They look at it, then they greet you. And, uh, and you know, to them, this is a wonderful tradition. Well, they are happiest. So I had to explain to Hansel, we have a little young, young boy called Hansel, and he's never seen this, perhaps. And so I gave him one, he looks at me, what is this? So I had to explain to him, this is an Ang Pao, explaining this tradition that we have, and then why we give it, and then he listened, listened. I said, inside have money, he smiled. <laughs> I said, please look after this. You most likely will have people come and, and, you know, you know, usually give it to the children who yeah, the, or students and you're not working yet. So it, it happens. Now, there's no hard and fast. Some you know, older people get Ang Pao too, right? And sometimes it, it happens. So this morning, I, I got one Ang Pao. I was quite shocked. Then how come? I, you know, married already. I get, no, but she said, you know what, Pastor, I just want to say thank you at you know, just a way of expressing my gratitude for the ministry here. And, and usually I don't, don't, don't receive things like that. But, you know, the heart of gratitude is what we always would like to see. And so, you know, graciously <laughs> receive it. And it is wonderful that we, you know, our focus was to thank God for how He has seen us too, true. Right? So there is another part. There's a cultural, there's a traditional. Now, this is one part that is to us just as important, and that is called the spiritual part. And it is just as wonderful, and we will be looking at that today, and the whole part of worshipping God. That's the spiritual part. So we look at worshipping God, we look at who He is, we look at His blessings, we look at how He has blessed, and how we respond to His blessing. That's called the spiritual part. So ne next Sunday, we will have a special lunch uh, for Chinese New Year. Remember, 15 days. So it still falls within, which is all right. So just a reminder, it's not today. Okay, so it's not today. And uh, next week, we will have, have that. Right? So what are some of the things that we, we see that the Lord has blessed us with? Well, the Lord has protected. That's wonderful. The Lord has provided. And to me, I add one more thing. The Lord has provided not just funds, not just uh, you know, th resources, but He's also given to us people to serve in church that makes Bethel what it is. And I thought I would want to share with you maybe a group of people that we, uh, you know, they're not up in the front, but they do a lot of background work that has brought a lot of 
uh, actually been a blessing to all of us. Okay, so I just want to show you a photo of the AVA uh, team, and they're always at the back. Uh, this is a photograph of them just to, in the spirit of Chinese New Year, appreciate. Uh, you know, we appreciate your people, we just appreciate their ministry to us too. Not just in the local context, but in an uh, international overseas there are people who tune into our website and listen to the messages, right? And some of them actually depend on it. Well, some of them don't depend on it. They're actually uh, from Bethany, and they listen there, and then they listen here too, and, and that's wonderful. But there are those who uh, are, you know, they, they are not, there are our people who are studying abroad or working abroad, and they actually look forward to this. Or there are people who are, you know, maybe unwell and would like to tune into the service so they can keep in touch, they can worship. So the AVA ministry actually plays a vital role, right? We are looking forward to upgrading the system because I was told that the live streaming part, we didn't have live stream before, we just added it on. Now it just adds an extra load. So sometimes they can, you have good quality live stream, but it affects here. If we want to focus on here, it affects live stream. Almost we can't have both. So we're going to try and upgrade that and see whether we can improve on both. Okay, just to uh, let you know that well, we appreciate the ministry. And the least we can do is not just to say thank you, but to offer whatever support we can that they can serve the Lord uh, effectively and they can be a blessing to many more hearts. Okay? Well, this morning as we prepare for worship, I would like to share with you a word. And this is taken from Psalm 103. Remember the spiritual part of the celebration of Chinese New Year? There is a spiritual part. How do we respond to God? How do we respond to God for His blessings in life. Now, turn to Psalm 103. And this is a wonderful response that we can learn as we prepare for worship this morning. Right? Now, Psalm 103. Wow, well, this, in the spirit of Psalm 103, you know, this dear lady came in and said, Pastor Chris, I want to tell you how the Lord has blessed. And she traces how the Lord has blessed her, blessed her children, blessed the church. And, she, and her word was, I am just so grateful in her language. And sometimes we can't find the word, the, almost the word not strong enough, but it is a combination of actions and words. And the psalmist in very much in that heart wanted to respond to God for His blessings in life. Take a look. And so David said these words, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. That was, his ex you know, that was how he wanted to respond to God, to bless the name of the Lord from within his, the depth of his soul. And he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. And then he makes a list of how the Lord has blessed him, has benefited his life. And he says, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Five things, right? Now, we're not going to focus on just the things. We, we know what they are. But there are three thoughts I would like to share with you concerning a response. Now, the first thing is, this is not a spontaneous response. Spontaneous is someone give you something, the natural, the normal thing is to say thank you. Right? Receive thank you. It's called spontaneous. This is really, really special because it's more than that. Three things. One, it is a chosen response. It is something he says, bless the Lord. He tells himself, oh my soul, bless the Lord. 
It's the right thing to do. It's the correct thing to do. It's a chosen response. Two, it's a cultivated response. When you're not used to responding, you don't respond. People can do things for you, care for you, uh, and you don't cultivate in this in your life. It's not part of your life. Right? So we teach the children, when somebody gives you an ang pao, what do you, you greet them nicely, you receive it with two hands. It's something learned. Cultivate this. So when we respond to God, this is a good response. We choose to respond like this. We cultivate this response. And the third thing, it is a contemplated response. He's thought through it. He recalls the blessings of God. He makes it in the order that He deems. This is not a random list. He puts it of all the blessing. He didn't put food first. Most of us will put, well, He give me good things to eat. <laughs> More of us, straight away, whatever comes to your mind, you put down. Contemplate means you've thought through this. You know what? Of all the, risk, all the blessings of God that has really changed his life and allowed him to live a meaningful life is this. God has forgiven me of my sins. All right? Like I said, the Chinese New Year is not just about a new year as per se. It is about a renewal of life. To many of us, it's like a reset. The old is the old. We want to enter the new year with a new, new us. A new us. Yes, there are the traditions, there's the culture, but there is also the spiritual part. Thank God He forgives us of our errors, our sins, our mistakes. We can go into a new year and try again. This is a precious, precious blessing. That's why it's called a contemplated response. You've really got to think through this. And so I would like to encourage us all, as we come to worship the Lord, let, let, there be, let it be a chosen response. Let it be a cultivated response to say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Let it be a contemplated response. Okay? Today, for next week, as we come to, uh, together, as we celebrate, as we worship the Lord again, let your worship be a wonderful response to the Lord. And as you bless Him to honor Him, may He bless you to honor you too. Let's prepare our hearts for worship.
Good morning, everyone, and I'd like to wish everyone here a Sing Nian Kwai Le. I had this. Zu Zu Zi Tian En. And for those who are not bilingual like myself, as you can tell, it means a Happy New Year and wishing everyone the Lord's blessing of His grace. As we come before the Lord to worship Him, let us take this worship seriously. Let us come before the Lord, bow our heads as we enter into a time of worship. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that you are God who is merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. We thank you that you are God who gives to us the joy that we need to see things in life, even though things are so grim. We thank you for the blessing of joy. And we thank you for your blessing of who you are, that you are God who is the possessor of heaven and earth, that we are here today to worship you and to honor you. We ask and pray that as we enter into this time of worship, may you gladden us with worship. May you um, open up our hearts to receive your words this morning. Bless us, we pray, for all these things in the Lord Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, as we greet each other a happy Lunar New Year and wishing uh, each and every one of our brethren um, the Lord's wishes of blessing. We come together for the purpose of worshipping the Lord this morning on Sunday. Like myself, my children are not bilingual too. But around this time of the year, uh, we teach them and remind them uh, to greet their elders, Sin Yen Kwai Le. With this occasion, we get to celebrate with family and friends, and some may actually be celebrating uh, the Lunar New Year um, with their extended families overseas. This morning, we get this opportunity to celebrate with the church family. With every opportunity, may we see the goodness of the Lord in our lives. We have been learning from the Psalms in the Bible. Some of the Psalms, the writer comes across difficulties and challenges in life. However, the writer calls upon God for help, that he may intervene in times of trouble. And the Lord graciously and mercifully delivers the writer of the psalm, and it is recorded for us for our learning. The message has been on God's blessing and the theme is, God's blessing is upon his people. We have been exploring, studying, and learning from the, this theme since the start of January. God's blessings goes beyond the material things in life that temporarily gives us joy. Our first hymn this morning is appropriately entitled, Joyful, Joyful. We adore thee. Our first hymn is sings of knowing who God is and finding a special joy in him. If you discover God for yourself, he is God who melts away sin and sadness. He is a wonderful God who blesses us with joy and gladness. Because he does this, he is worthy of worship worthy of praise. Well, let us come together. Let us worship the Lord with our first hymn. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Let us take up this hymn together. Let us sing. Sin and sadness 
drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround me, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around me, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice. During this time, skeptics would look into um, their zodiac signs, their Chinese zodiac signs, to find out if they would have a successful year, a good year, a prosperous year ahead. And if they don't receive positive readings, they would live out the entire year with cautious. Um, I learned this one just recently, that on Chinese New Year Day, do not pick up scissors or knives, lest you cut away your good luck. <laughs> you know, as believers in the Lord, do we fear these things? No, is the answer. Nor do we look into them. The Lord is a righteous God, and He is the ultimate one who blesses, who pronounces His blessing upon His people. I like what Psalm 34, verse 8 to ten says, and it reads, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. May we come to experience the goodness that the Lord offers to us, that he will not withhold any good thing to those who trust in him. At a deeper level, may we learn to trust in the Lord even more. May we revere the Lord because he is God, a holy and righteous God. And let us seek him, let us seek the Lord for his favor. Our second hymn is entitled, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. This hymn is a beautiful hymn that sings of the one God who richly blesses us. Whomever God has blessed, no one or nothing can take away his blessing from us. This means that the Lord's blessing are unfailing, they are guaranteed and sure. Through the reality of life, we face problems and challenges. However, God still provides his blessing 
in keeping us in answered prayers. May we continue to learn to seek the Lord in his words and to trust in the Lord and in his faithfulness. Well, let us um, join us as we sing this wonderful hymn to the Lord. I invite you to rise and stand with us as we um, take up this hymn together. Let us sing. for singing. Please be seated. Thank you, Kelly, Daryl, and Tim. I'll pass the time to Pastor Chris. Uh, thank you, Lionel. It is wonderful to wish people all the different greetings. If you want to learn Chinese, the kids, best, best time to start to learn. And uh, it, yeah, as you look at it, I was just listening to this podcast, very interesting podcast to talk about the history of Chinese New Year. And this person is an expert in Chinese history and, of course, the tradition of Chinese New Year. Guess which nationality? I thought I would expect Chinese. He's German. <laughs> that was to be one of the most... Part. And he speaks fluent Chinese. Sometimes you look at it, how come other people are more fascinated with your culture than yourself? And, and that can be a, you know, uh, it's, sometimes it's, it's like that, right? It's true in many areas. We, I always have people who come overseas and tell me all the different places in Perth that are good to visit. The tourists will tell you where all the places are good to visit. The local person, the coals and you know, the, all, all the normal places, we don't know where anything is, unfortunately. Well, what about it when it comes to our faith in the Lord? That would be painful if it takes somebody else out there that don't really know the Lord to tell you a little bit more about the Lord. And that can happen. For me, I, I determined to know my faith in the Lord more and more every single year. And it's wonderful to be able to do this. Okay, just want to share with you some of the thoughts in the spirit of the Chinese New Year, in the celebration, in you know, all the things that we are doing, right? The, the seeking of uh, the blessing and very much part of the Chinese tradition. All the things we do actually all amount to 
the desire to have a year that is more blessed than the previous, right? So you, you know, if only if you can understand the, the Chinese character, you know, the, the Chinese word uh, uh, fortune or, or you know, folk. They have it pace, but have it upside down. Do you know why? It's a play of words. So when you look at it, A, it's, it's upside down. And the phrase upside down talks about how that fortune is because the same word is present, now is here. And a lot of these things have to do with the words that I use. So when you, know, you, you do the yu shang, and uh, you know, they talk about the fish, why eat the fish? Because it represents, it sounds like a particular word that represents you know, abundance and, and things like that. You know, these things, sometimes, so to some, it could be quite interesting. It could be quite fun. And to a lot of people, it is, you know, it's something that they take quite seriously, actually. Right? So, to me, would it be wonderful to look at the Lord's Word and say, well, yeah, some people read the Scriptures. Okay, they read it for fun. Some look at it with some interest. But for us, we take it and we can read it with a great sense of, delight and joy. That would be wonderful. Okay, while we pray together, and then we are going to read uh, this uh, wonderful text uh, in Psalm 28 later. Our Father, we thank you for the joy of reading and understanding your word a bit better, that we may know the blessings that you give to us in life. And we pray that our hearts can be encouraged in the reading of this particular psalm. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. To me, the Lord's blessings and how it is obtained is, abs is, is wonderful because it's practical. Because some of the things like picking up, cannot pick up scissors, is a bit impractical. How is a person who is a chef going to practice that? Worse, how is a person who is a tailor going to practice that? You cannot pick up the scissors. Finish. This is my livelihood. Why are you going to use chopper? I can, cannot. Right? So there are all kinds of things that you got. Is this really practical? Now, let's take a look at uh, Psalm 28. And Psalm 28 is essentially a prayer. Right? How do you pray? Well, there are times where we pray and uh, a little bit more urgently than other times. When do we pray more urgently? <laughs> when the problems come. When there are problems at hand, unfortunately, but it's there. So this particular prayer is because you know, there's a bit of a crisis. And so we read, like, look what he says. To you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. Uh, don't be silent to me. You know this is a urgent prayer. Right? I think we all know what urgency is. So when a person maybe, you know, have a little cut of the figure, like, is this urgent? Do you need to call an ambulance? Uh, do you need uh, somebody to come and send you to the hospital? Probably not. Now, if somebody has a heart attack, now it's a different situation. You, ambulance will be called, you need to rush to hospital, hopefully they can attend to you immediately. Kind. You, you cannot waste any time. Now, the gravity of this is a bit obvious, right? And so, how did this, the David respond and he really needed help here. And so he cried out to God and he said, Lord, you are my rock. And it's something that we, we really should appreciate where we have God to call upon. That we can come to know him as a solid rock, right? Stable, solid, you can turn to him, you can pray. Now, this is not for everybody because there are people who feel that if you pray, 
if you speak about trusting God, you are in denial. Right? You're just in denial. You're not facing your problems practically. You are, uh, you know, you're just in denial. Uh, I, I still remember when Auntie Calf told me that she was in the aged care and she, you know, spoke with the staff and, and told the staff that you know, the staff knew that she was in a great pain. She was in a lot of pain. And then she told the staff, of course, they sent, you know, they wanted to make sure she's not going to be depressed too. And so she told the staff, the staff that, you know what, I am going to trust my God. I am go not going to, you know, go that way. And they were very concerned for her. She is in denial. So what, what is that? Why is that in denial? Oh, because she is not responding as normal people should respond. This is called denial. And she told me that, and I thought, wow, what is this? So is David in denial? He's not. He looks at the problems that he needs to face, and he's there. And to him, the, this is the reality of life that is there, and he cries out to God. Right? See, the Christian faith is not a faith of denial. It is a faith that looks at the challenges of life, and this, we call it, this is called the reality of life. Life is full of challenges. So it's not, okay, don't talk about challenges, don't talk about problems, and they will never come. That's not how we face it. We look at it, we are there to experience it there too, but what do we do? We call upon God. Now, take a look. Let's, let's take a look at how he prays. This is good for us to learn. And so he prays, and he cries out to God, Lord, you are my rock. Right? And then his, uh, his concern is this. Would God be silent? Don't be silent to be. And so he, 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 he's very open with God. God, if you are silent, I will become like those who go down to the pit. In other words, there's no plan B. This is called only one plan, and that is the word. And this is my plan. I come to you. I, I seek you for help. Please help me, I pray. See, a lot of people, they tried everything under the sun, then I got no more, no more option, then I come to God. They have to wait until they are in serious trouble, then come to God. Sometimes you can come to God too late. Right? So please, if you have any medical attention and think that, look, if this is needed, you, please, they always tell you, attend to it. Don't wait until it is too late then what can they do? Right? So you know, people, okay, I'm going to wait until I really need God in life, then I will seek God. Really? There is a too late. Why would you do that? He is, wisely, David is not going to be in that situation. In other words, there's no plan, plan B, plan A, plan B, A, B, C, D, E. God, this is my plan. I come to you, Lord and I'm concerned, don't be silent, right? If you're silent, I will go down to the pit. In other words, I, I need your help. I'm fully dependent upon you. Now, look at what he says. Hear the voice of my prayers when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands toward your holy sanctuary. In other words, he's not going to just quit easily. Lord, I'm going to come to you humbly. I'm going to come to you sincerely. I am going to cry out to you believing that you will hear me and answer me. Now, that's, that's him. That's him. It's not, okay, I'll give it a try. See, I prayed and it didn't work and I move on. That's not him. His is, Lord, I, you are my God, you are my rock, and I come to you. And Lord, help me. And he is going to say, hear the voice of my supplication. Now, he opens his heart to God. He brings his turmoils to God. So he's a little bit conflicted inside him. So what were the things that really troubled him? Now, we, we see this in verse 3. 
Now, he's, he's worried, and he says, Lord, don't take me away with the wicked. Now, that was his concern, right? And so he says, look, the, with the wicked, workers of iniquity who speak peace to their neighbors. Now, there are people who are wicked. I think we all have come across people like that. On the one hand, they speak peace to their neighbors. But inside them, they are workers of iniquity. There is evil in their hearts. Unfortunately, this becomes a big problem. Right? Peace. But then they are out to get you. Now, can it happen? Well, David experienced this. And of course, this makes him very upset. Right? He's, so he, he prayed, Give them according to their deeds according to the wickedness of their endeavours. Give them according to the work of their hands. Render to them what they deserve. Now, he is suddenly... Do you, do you see the shift? Lord, help me. I am, don't be silent. And then the turmoils in the heart, sometimes that can happen. As we cry out to God, we become so consumed with how we feel. One, he's worried. Two, he's angry. He's angry with the wicked. And he finds himself praying against the wicked, right? And so he said, because they do not regard the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy him. The, 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 he shall destroy them and not build them up. Now, is this a right prayer to make? <laughs> right? This is not about right prayer. You begin to realize this is... Hey, this is not very good. He's so angry. He's praying against people. And he is, and at the same time, he's torn because God, you know, I'm angry with them, but please don't, don't take me away with the wicked. Can you, can you pray like that? Well, this is what we are looking at, right? Now, when you read this, good thing that this doesn't end there. If it ends there, you know, how, how do we make sense out of this prayer? Right Now, we read the next part, which is actually wonderful. So I always, the first part, I call this, it, it's, just, it's just the real you. When we pray, it's not about just words. Let it be the real you that really prays. Are you worried? God, please don't be silent. Are you upset? It's not venting. Right? It is, this is where I am. This is how I feel. This is, I really need you. Lord, you are my rock. Please hear me. This is the real you. Now, the real you doesn't mean, okay, this is the best way to pray. It's just you. And does God allow for that? Absolutely. It is not about just saying the right prayers. It is not just about the words alone. But what is the real you? when you come to God, right? Can I open up, God? There are certain things I cannot tell. I cannot, I cannot tell my in-laws. I cannot even tell my parents. I cannot tell my husband. I cannot tell my wife. I cannot, because they may misunderstand you. And that happens. I have a, a neighbor, and um, I ask her, so you know, we talk, and she says, uh, she shared with me, she's a forensic psychiatrist. I said, wow, what do you do? She said, I see a lot of terrible things, especially what drugs do to young people. She said, my youngest patient is nine years old, and it has just damaged him. That he's just mentally unstable, unsound, you know, has to go to, the, go to the court and be with the you know, patient that is there, and all kinds of things. And she said, I wish I could just bring young people to see what I see, and hopefully that scares them to don't touch drugs. I say, how do you cope? You've got so many things pumped up, all kinds of wrong and evil and problems. She say, I come home. I have to keep calm at work. Keep calm, right? The, the English is keep calm and carry on. Right? Keep calm and carry on. How do you keep calm? They say, keep calm. But when I come home, I unload on my husband. 
all the thing. And, and he's a good man because he just absorbs everything. <laughs> Me, I would probably go crazy. <laughs> right? Not everybody is going to you. I'm going to listen to all your work woes and problems and hate, are angry with the world, angry. And then in the Monday, you still got to go back to work. That is difficult. Can the real you, this week is called the real you. You see, can, wow. then not everybody will be able to take it. God, you are rock. You are solid. He's not going to, God is not going to be discouraged by you for that matter. He's not going to be, in a sense, troubled by you. He is rock. And he is going to be there to one listen silently sometimes. But he is going to wait for you to get it out and then respond. Now, look at the response. We look at the real, you know, this is the prayer, this is the real, real him. This is David. This is when he is not writing his beautiful psalm. He get upset too. He's not be- playing his beautiful harp, making beautiful music. Can he be upset? Well, he was very upset. Now, the next part is important. Now, well, let's look at the next part. Is what God's blessings can do for us, actually. And this is wonderful. Look at the change. Did he stay bitter, angry, and, okay, I've said all that I need to say, and I feel better. That, that's not what it is. Right now, let's take a look. He, look at verse 6 and 7 now. He said there is a sharp change. There is a distinctive change. He's not talking about the wicked. He's not talking about praying that God would destroy them. He is not uh, worried that, God, why are you silent? He, it's completely changed. Take a look at this. Look at verse 6 and 7. He says, Bless be the Lord. Because he has heard the voice of my supplications. And then he says, the Lord is my one strength and my shield. Now, how did he, you know, he go from, you know, where, how he felt to now bless the Lord. How did he do that? You know, if you see a person first, you know, very sad, very sad looking, they're suddenly very happy. You think the person's crazy. It's too much already. Maybe his mind broke. It is not. You know, Susanna Wesley, uh, he's, she's got two famous sons, and the son is John and Charles Wesley, and um, those who are the Methodist church will know that these, are, these two men, servants of God, were the founders of the Methodist church. But the mother is whom they always pay tribute to because the mother made all the difference in their life. She had over 10 children to look after. The father was always traveling. You know, he was a preacher and he, he had to travel. It was her that, listen, homeschooled the children and cared for them all by herself. And it was tough. She will... Yeah, there's no choice. They all have to wake up at a certain time. They all have to eat breakfast at a certain time. Each one she will spend time with throughout the day. I got two, and that's hard. And to, how did she do? How did she find the strength, the wisdom, and not go crazy? She now, no matter how busy she is. Now, children being children, were they all good kids and happy, obedient kids? Of course not. They were normal kids, right? One day, the, the house was lit on fire. Can you imagine? He set the house on fire, literally. And then the younger son had to jump out of the window. Good thing that boy was saved. His name was called John Wesley. Things like that can happen. How do you not go crazy? And she would tell the kids, when mommy put the apron on her head, is, this is called time out. This is my time where I need to pray to God and find strength from Him. And all the kids know that at a certain time, when the apron on the head, don't, don't, don't can, mommy, I'm hungry, no. I, I, can you help me? No. This was her time, and she shared with people 
this is how I found stripe. Is it for real? Well, this is called testimony. You, can, you don't need to believe in it, but this is exactly what David did. Bless the Lord. I cannot but bless you because you have heard. You have heard the voice of my... In other words, you've heard my prayer. You've heard my cry. And he said, the Lord is my strength. I did not have strength to go on to fight these battles. I'm just so tired out. And you gave me strength. You are my strength. You are my shield. How did it happen? Now, this is the secret. And so people ask you, what is the secret, Susanna Wesley? It's very similar. Not exact words, but very similar. This was David's secret. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. You don't just pray. That's just words. You believe in what you are saying as you come to God. You are my rock, and I trust you fully. That's a relationship, right? So somebody you can trust, and there, and the person is calm, the person is focused, because you are there with them. That's trust. And in life, if you can find a few people whom you can really trust, you're doing very, very well. But there is God whom David can call upon and say, God, my heart trusted in you and I am helped. And he was helped indeed. And look what happened. He says, therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. That's his reason. That's his secret. He could not, you know, the, the joy that is there and then he's, this is his response. And with my song, I will praise him. That's, that is the result of it. I, I call this, right? This is the real me. And sometimes the real me can be all over the place, especially when crisis comes. But this is what the Lord's blessing can do. It can bring about a revival in our heart, in our spirit, in, in our life even. This is revival. Suddenly, He can bless the Lord. Suddenly, he can say, Lord, strength is there. You are my strength. You are my shield. Right? Look at it. This is called a single-hearted trust. I trusted in you, and I am helped. I'm not you know, all over the place. On the one hand, oh, I, I'm praying. On the other hand, I'm panicking. Right? It's not keep calm and carry on. This is keep calm and pray. Which was David? Keep calm. Pray. Well, he wasn't calm to begin with. And then, okay, st stop it. Keep calm now. My heart trusts in you. And as he did, you know what? He was helped. And so, what did he do? Okay, cannot, his heart is just so full. He says, Lord, therefore my heart greatly rejoices. I will sing my song. I will praise you. And that is a wonderful response. Now, it doesn't end there, all right? Look at what he does now. He begins to pray a little bit differently, all right? Look at that. There's a re real you here, and that can be sometimes all over the way. Now, there is a revived you. This is wonderful. We all need a revived us, you know, all right? You, we think about it, whether it's the Chinese New Year or whether it's the Western New Year, is any New Year, is the same us that passed from the old year to the new year. Same old, same old. Same tired self, same worries, same whatever. A little bit of feasting was done, a little bit of weight gain, and then, but essentially, same. What we really need is this is, this is where the Lord's blessing is truly wonderful. There can come about a revival. A revived you. You look at the problem, it's still there by the way, and you know what? The Lord is my strength. He's my shield and He has answered. That answer of prayer perked Him up. It gave Him the confidence the assurance, now he's not worried about. We need that. A revive us. 
Look at how he prays now. Big difference. Look at verse 8 and 9. He, he says, this is how he prays. Now he's praying for others, right? He's experienced it. You cannot pray for others if you're not experienced this. He can now say, the Lord is their strength. Wow. And he is the saving refuge of his anointed. So he is praying for those who are anointed by the Lord. They could be his servants. They could be his people. And he prays, Lord, you are his strength. You are their refuge. Wonderful. Now, look at verse 9. And this is a wonderful prayer to make. And I hope we will make such prayer. All right. And so he prays now with a revived faith, looking at the Lord's blessing, and he prays, Lord, one, save your people. Two, bless your inheritance. Now, your inheritance is, is, a, is, is just a beautiful description of God's people. God calls his people his inheritance, right? It is, God gives to us a wonderful inheritance, but what is his inheritance? You see, it's not just about things. It's his people. He calls it, you are my inheritance. In other words, you're precious to me. And so he prayed, Lord, save, bless your inheritance. Three, shepherd them also and bear them up forever. Now that is a wonderful prayer that just tells us this person has truly been now. See, we can get so caught up with the problem. We can make angry prayers. We can make prayers and we're just upset with this and that and we're still stuck. This is different. You look at it, he looks at it, the focus now is quite different. Lord, bless your people. Shepherd them. Enlighten and this is something that I treasure, how God's Word can give that focus in life. How the Word of God can reveal wonderful things. How we can pray. How we can respond to life's challenges. And this is, a, is, is how he is looking at. He begins to pray for God's people so much more. Right? So how do I pray? Well, how do I pray for uh, people? Well, I pray for God's people too. I pray for my family. I pray for uh, people I'm concerned about. If they're unwell, they're battling uh, health challenges. Of course, these are private uh, prayers that I bring to the Lord. I have a little book and I, their name is there and I remember them. Lord, I would like to pray for them. And it's not just words. You bring it up to the Lord. You enter into the challenges, the tears, the frustration, the sorrow, the real them. And then you try to pray for them. And it's not easy. Right? Well, how do I pray for those people? One, Lord, would you save? Would you deliver them from their challenges? Two, would you bless them? Three, would you lead them, shepherd them, be that shepherd to lead them, to guide them, to protect them, shepherd them also. And then, would you bear them up forever? Meaning to say, to bear, sometimes they carry a very heavy burden. There are so many challenges that words cannot even explain. Well, David was one of them. He had many burdens. Susanna Wesley had the burden of almost 10 children upon her. That's heavy. How did she raise them up? Lord, be there to bear, meaning He will carry your burdens with you. He will give you that strength to carry on, to fulfill the task to be done. I mean, to me, that is a wonderful thought to begin the new year with that we can cry out to God, our rock, that we can come to Him and say, Lord, this is the real me. Well, there's a reality of life. There is, you know, this is my heart. This is what I'm going through. I'm, you know, don't be silent. If you'll be silent, I will go to the pit, you know. 
you know what, the Lord is not going to be discouraged by all the things that we say, and He just understands us. He's rock, and He knows how to best help us. Put your trust in Him. So when we pray, pray. Pray diligently. Pray sincerely. Come to the Lord humbly. Right? But as we receive that blessing from Him, also respond gratefully. I think that is a good and right thing to always do. And trust fully. May this encourage us all to look at the new year ahead, there may be challenges that we're still currently going through. What's, what's a good way to look at it? Well, Psalm 28, may this encourage you, may it guide you to come to the Lord and to find a revived faith. A revived faith that could see things a bit clearer. A revived faith, strength. A revived faith, there is joy. A revived faith, an even greater confident certainty to pray even for others. Okay, well, may the Lord bless you with this word. Well, let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for the scriptures that it really opens. It shows us sometimes what we're really like. And then it offers us a wisdom to respond in faith, to come to you and not wait till it's too late to come to you perhaps even with little problems, with little concerns, than to see how you would lead us, you would guide us, you would show us how real you can be to all who put their trust in you. May we be like the psalmist, that we can respond with these words over here too, that as we trust you, we have also been helped. We ask that you would hear this, our prayer, and bless. Revive us again, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, let's, let us give a love gift as a response to the Lord and his goodness to us. Now let's prepare to give an offering. We're going to conclude uh, with this hymn. And this hymn is like a prayer. We've been reading, we read Psalm 28, and Psalm 28 is essentially a prayer. But this hymn is also a prayer. And this is a prayer that sings of asking God to actually revive us. Give to us a revived, perhaps heart, spirit, faith to give to us a renewed strength. And I think this is something that you know, we all desire as we look at the, the new year. To go in with strength, to go in with not worries, but to know that God is our rock and He is that shield to be there for us. Not being presumptuous, certainly not denial. Just grateful to have known God, to know that He is accessible, that we can put our trust in Him. Right, going to ask uh, Kelly and Daryl to come on over and to lead us into singing. Well, let's sing this together. Let it be a, a wonderful response to the Lord's blessing with these words. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, Thine the glory Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Let there be a spirit of joy as we sing to the Lord. Let it be, well, it come forth from a revived heart and spirit. Well, we begin with asking the Lord to revive us.
Let's rise as we seek this together. Son of thy love, for Jesus who died as is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. Spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Oh, glory and praise. The Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with far from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Let's ask the Lord to bless us as we go from here. And now may this wonderful God of ours, whom we may call upon in our time of need, as our rock, as our fortress, as our strength, as our shield, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ enable us to draw near to God, to come humbly to Him in prayer and in trust. May the Spirit of God cause about a renewal, a revival of heart, spirit, of faith even. And may we find this newness of life in the new year ahead to the glory of the Lord Jesus who have brought about His blessing and made it possible for us. To Him be the glory now and forevermore. Amen.